All right. Um, so far, we have seen two techniques to compute limits of sequences. Um, the, the, the first of them is limit laws, and we know that um, the, there is the, essentially the, the same technique to find the limit of a function. The, the second one is the squeeze theorem, right? And again, it is essentially the same as for finding limits of functions. But uh, when we work with functions, there, there is a third very powerful technique, L'Hopital's rule, right? So you know that there is a L'Hopital's rule uh, that tells us that if we have um, limits of the type like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, then what we can do, we can, if the, this is the limit of two functions, of the, the ratio of two functions, then we can uh, basically differentiate the numerator and denominator and find the uh, limit of the ratio of the two derivatives, right? Now, let us see how this works with uh, sequences. Now, basically, the idea is that if we have a sequence, a n, then uh, we just kind of replace n with x. So we kind of replace a n with like a of x, and then we find the limit of the, the function instead applying a L'Hopital's rule, and then we just conclude that the limit of the sequence is going to be the same, right? Okay, so that's kind of the, the idea. So uh, now, then let me show you how, how, how it works, right? So uh, here is the, the first example. Well, I'm going to show you a slightly different uh, approach to, to do this than uh, the, the, the printed version, right? So the idea here is that I am going to, basically the, the logic here is that the, the, there is a sum of n and e to the n in both numerator and denominator, but both of them approach infinity. So the, this is the limit of the type infinity over infinity. And um, e to the n grows much faster than three to the n, right? So which means that if we want to, um, to apply the familiar trick, so which means dividing both numerator and denominator by the highest power, then instead of dividing by n, we should divide by e to the n, right? So the idea here is that we are going to divide both numerator and denominator by e to the n, right? And by doing this, we will get the following. So we will get um, 3n divided by e to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus n over e to the n. Well, and what we have here is the, this limit. So what is going to be the limit of n divided by e to the n as n approaches infinity? Well, and the idea here is that uh, we are going to, to basically replace x with e to the x, right? So what if instead we think of it as a continuous function and replace n with x, right? So what is the limit of x divided by e to the x as x approaches infinity, right? So this is the indeterminate form of the type infinity over infinity because both numerator and denominator approach infinity, right? So when we do this, we have our L'Hopital's rule uh, and basically, we can take the limit as x approaches infinity of the ratio of two derivatives. So, and the derivative of x is one and the derivative of e to the x is still e to the x, right? And now the answer is, you know, that this is, basically you can think of it as one over e raised to the power x and one over e is smaller than one, right? So raised to the power x yeah, approaches zero. So the, the limit is zero. So which means that if the limit uh, of the function is zero, so then the limit of the sequence is also zero. Right? So the limit of the sequence is also zero, which means that we can replace e over e to the n with zero. Right? So this is going to be three times zero plus one over one minus zero, which is one. Okay. So that's how it works. So in the suggested solution, it is slightly different. So here they just do the district with x from, from the start. Uh, and then they apply L'Hopital's rules, L'Hopital's rule twice instead. But so whatever you prefer, yeah, it's up to you which of the two ways you, 
you find more um, comfortable to to implement. Okay, so the next example, well, in the next example, to, to be honest, I'm not sure that the next example is is uh, is, is really kind of correct one because, well, let, let me uh, explain a little bit of history of mathematics here. Now, the, the this limit that, that you see here is in fact the original definition of E, right? So, you know, the, the, this limit is known to be E and not only it is, it is known to be E, this is the original kind of definition because, um, right, so this is E and historically, Jacob Bernoulli in 17th century uh, studied compound interest rates and uh, by kind of compounding over shorter and shorter periods of time, he discovered that, uh, you know, that everything boils down to this limit and he found out that the, 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 this limit exists and its value is uh, something like 2.7 something something and uh, well th this is how E was discovered so later Leonard Euler uh, suggested the uh, notation E for, for the, the, this limit right? but it, it was discovered actually as, as E so this is the original definition of E well however uh, the modern definition well th there are different modern definitions of E and one of them that I personally think the easiest to sort of implement and follow is the following, right? So first we begin with the definition of ln x. So and ln x is by definition is the uh, integral from one to x of one over t dt, right? So once we discover, when we, once we define ln x, we define the exponential function to be the inverse function of the logarithm not the reciprocal the inverse function and after this we define e to be x of one right so and if we adopt the, this definition then of course it becomes unclear whether the, the given limit is e or whether it even exists or not right so the proof that the, the, this limit exists that, 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 that is just based on you know um kind of other techniques other than L'Hopital's rule is, is very complicated. So, um, it, it's not really a bad idea to, to kind of to, 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 to start with the logarithm definition and derive the, this limit, uh, you know, applying L'Hopital's rule. So let, let me show, show you how, how we can do this. Well, the, the first thing that, that, that we uh, should um, make use of is the following, um, formula right so basically what we have here is something to the power of something so some expression to the power of another expression and whenever we have um, something like that looks like a to the power b it is always advisable to change it to the exponential form to rewrite it as e to the power b ln a and then work with this All right so he, here is uh, how we can do it here right? so if the, this term is a n then this a n is going to be e to the power n times ln of 1 plus 1 over n and then now let's just work with this so and the question boils down to finding the limit of the expression n times ln of 1 plus 1 over n as n goes to infinity well uh, let us apply our x technique right so let us find the limit as x goes to infinity right so the idea is that n is an integer and well x can be any any positive well any real number but here x approaches infinity so we can think of it as a positive number so x times ln 1 plus 1 over x right so uh, as x goes to infinity so notice that x goes to infinity and ln of 1 plus 1 over x uh, goes to ln 1 which is 0 so this is the indeterminate form of the type infinity times 0 now in order to solve this basically we can rewrite it as just i mean we can either uh, move x to the denominator or move ln of 1 plus 1 over x to the denominator and it just seems to be a better idea to, to do it with x right so this is really the same as um ln of 1 plus 1 over x divided by 1 over x right 
and this is already an indeterminate form of the type 0 over 0 because 1 over x approaches 0 as x goes to infinity. So applying L'Hopital's rule, we see that this is uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of... I've got to differentiate, so let, let me just, just try the big fraction. When I differentiate the long function, I get 1 over 1 plus 1 over x times the derivative of 1 uh, over x, which is minus 1 over x squared. And the denominator is just 1 over x, so its derivative is minus 1 over x squared. All right, and now these two cancel out. And the remaining part is just, well, so here we have 1 over x, and it approaches 0. So it goes to 1 over 1 plus 0, which is just 1. Okay, but remember that the original limit was e raised to, to that power. So which means that the answer to the original limit is really e raised to this power, e to the 1, which is e. All right, so th this is how we can derive the, this classical limit found uh, in 17th century by um, Johann, Johann, what's called? Jacob, Jacob, Jacob Bernoulli. All right, so here is, you know, the printed version of the, the same approach. It's pretty much the, the same as what I just explained. And that's how we do limits of sequences by L'Hopital's rule.